Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to open up in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. We magnify you. We glorify your name, Heavenly Father. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Worthy to receive glory, honor, praise, and thanksgiving, Heavenly Father. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. <clears throat> We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we just praise your name that you're El Shaddai, the many-breasted one, Heavenly Father, our very present help in the time of trouble, Lord. We thank you. We glorify you, Heavenly Father. We thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that sin does not exercise dominion over us because we're not under the law, but we're under grace, Heavenly Father. And we thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. He's, he's our leader, our teacher, our God, our comforter, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your word. Your word is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path, Father. We thank you that there is therefore right now no condemnation to them that are in Christ, period. We thank you that the very spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us and he quickens every cell, every organ, every function of our body with resurrection, life, divine health, and renewal of youth, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father, for hearing, hearing, and listening, listening heart. We thank you, Father, that the eyes of our understanding are continually being enlightened. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. <clears throat> the topic is how faith works. Amen. In Romans ten seventeen, it says, "So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of Christ. Faith comes by hearing. So as the word goes forth, people are he healed, delivered, blessed by hearing." And hearing the word of God. In Isaiah 53, 11, God says, That's how it is with my words. They do not return to me without doing everything that I sent them to do. In Psalms 138, 2, God says, I have magnified, I have exalted my word above my name. But then in the Gospel of John 1, 1, In the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. In Proverbs 4.20, the Lord tell us, tells us, My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He says, for they are life to those who find them, and, and health to all of their flesh. Amen. And the text is going to be coming from Romans 116. That's my text scripture. Romans 116. And it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. And salvation here is not just being saved, but it's healing, restoration, prosperity, and deliverance. It's wholeness. So it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, the good news. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. To the Jews first and also to the Greeks. And 17... Romans 1, 17, it says, For therein, therein what? The gospel of Christ. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed. For therein is the righteousness of God manifested from faith to faith. Not from faith to works, but from faith to faith. It says, As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So here, the just, we replace that with the righteous. The righteous shall live by faith, the Father says. Believing alone, period. Amen? And over in 
Romans 4, 6, this is David. Even as David also describes the blessedness of the man unto whom God impute righteousness without works. So righteousness has been imputed to us without works. When Jesus hung on the cross, there was a divine exchange. He took our unrighteousness and gave us his very own righteousness. And David says, describes the blessedness of that man unto whom God impute righteousness without works. It's believing alone. And in Romans 4, 7, saying, blessed, this is David speaking, blessed are they whose inequities, generational curses, are forgiven and whose sins are covered by the blood of Jesus. And number eight, it says, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not, and that's a double negative, will not impute sin. Sin does not come on our account because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. We have been made righteous. And I'm going to read that from the another version, the GNB version. Um, it says that this is what David meant by this is what David meant when he spoke of the happiness of the person whom God accepts as righteousness apart from anything that that person does. Not self-righteousness, but God's righteousness. In 7, it says, Happy are those whose wrong are forgiven, whose sins are pardoned. Our sins have been pardoned because of the blood of Jesus. And number eight, it says, happy is the person whose sins the Lord will not keep count of. Amen? Because he put all, Jesus paid for all of our sins, past, present, and future, in the future, in his body when he was on the cross. In 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, Christ he knew he was without sin. He knew no sin, but he became sin that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Amen. So we have been made righteous. Jesus took all of our sin and gave us his righteousness. In Romans 5, 17, it says, we have received abundance of grace and the gift, the gift of righteousness that came from God. Not man's righteousness, but God's very own righteousness. We received that when Jesus was on the cross. He gave us the gift of righteousness and abundance of grace that we might reign, control, rule right now, you guys. And in Daniel 9.24, it says that gift of righteousness that God gave us is everlasting. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that righteousness, we cannot lose it no matter what we do. Amen? Because all sin have been put in the body of our Savior, Jesus Christ. When Jesus was on the cross, all the fire judgment of God went upon Jesus that was supposed to come upon us. We don't have to pay for this because Jesus paid for it. And Jesus, the sacrifice, he consumed all the judgment of God. So it's everlasting. Our righteousness is everlasting. And in Isaiah 54, 14, it says, because we are established in righteousness, all our rights are made certain to us and have no fear. We have no fear of evil or destruction will not come near us because we are established in righteousness. In Isaiah 54, 17, it says, because we're established in righteousness, it says, no, no weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue spoken against us in judgment, we condemn it. It says, this is our heritage. We inherited this right. In our righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Amen. So there we see that we have been made righteous and we can't lose this righteousness. It's God's. It says the righteousness of God is revealed, is manifested from faith to faith. As it is written, the righteous shall live by faith and faith alone. Amen. 
And I have a question I wanted to know. How faith works. We know that in Romans 10, 17, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. But how does faith work? I'm going to answer that for you. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, this is how faith works. It says, but having the same spirit of faith, according to that which is written, it says, I believe, and therefore I did speak. I also believe, and therefore also we speak. So that's how faith works. You believe and you speak. And then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And faith works by believing and speaking. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. And, and God said, let there be light. And he saw immediately when he spoke, because God is a God of faith. So he spoke and he saw what he spoke immediately. And we were made in the likeness and image of God. In Genesis 1.26, God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them have dominion, control over the earth. So we see that we have been made in the likeness and image of God. And God at the beginning, he spoke and he saw exactly what he said. And we're going to see right here, I have some examples of Jesus speaking. And he saw immediately what he said. So every time we speak, we're supposed to see immediately what we say. Because we are created in the likeness and image of God, right? And we're supposed to imitate him, right? That's what he tells us to do in Ephesians 5, 1, to imitate him as dear children. Amen? Okay, so we, I'm going to have some examples here. In Matthew 21, 18, it says, uh, when Jesus got up the next morning, he was hungry, and he started out for the city in 19, and along the way, he saw a fig tree. But when he came to it, he found only leaves and no figs. So he told the tree, you will never again grow any fruit. And it says right then, not the next day, but right then, the fig tree dried up from the roots. Dried up. That's an example. Jesus saw immediately what he said. Amen? And Matthew uh, 21, 20, it says that the disciples were shocked when they saw how quickly the tree dried up. And remember, faith, faith works by believing and speaking. And we were created in the likeness and image of God. And he told us to imitate him. And here in Matthew 21, 21, it says, but Jesus said unto them, if you have faith, and don't doubt. Do not diacrinose in your heart. Do not condemn within yourself. Do not stagger at my word. He says, I promise you, you can do what I did to this tree. This is what he's telling us. And you will be able to do even more. Amen. He says, you can tell this mountain. I don't care if it's a mountain of sickness, a mountain of debt, a mountain of disorder. He says, you can tell this mountain. He didn't say, well, Mr. Mountain, can you just kind of move over just, just a little bit?